Okay, class, I'm back. This will be the last video for a while unless anybody has something specific they want a video on. We're going to go over briefly, hopefully briefly, over um, plagiarism and paraphrasing since we've already done reference list and citations. Now, if you go to your course homepage, now mine looks a little bit different, obviously, okay? At week nine, just drop down to week nine, if it's, it should be open. Um, or you can go back to week four and look at it. If you'll scroll all the way down the week, right here at the bottom, you can go in here and you can submit a paper for upload, all right? And what happens is, is once you've turned that in, it will give you something that looks similar to this. It'll take your paper and it'll check for plagiarism. And this stuff is highlighted, all right? I didn't want to go directly onto it because I'd have to check somebody's paper and I don't want anybody else seeing somebody else's paper. So, but you'll get these and along the side in the turnitin.com, it'll tell you where the source was from, where you got the source from, okay? So it'll highlight all the different places where plagiarism may be a factor. Okay, now there's some stuff that, you know, gets highlighted in some of these that I don't count, you know, like headers or at the bottom when you have these, um, the references or something. Rest assured, that's not something I'm looking for, okay? What I'm looking for are lines like this one. This is uh, cited, okay? But this part, starting with the naturally grow up to be non-racist only when they live in a non-racist society, that's a string of more than, say, three to five words, and that's kind of been the, the standard for quite a few years, that if you're, if you're lacing together three or five, between three and five or more words consecutively from a source, and you're not quoting it, then it's plagiarism, and you need to paraphrase it instead and that can be hard and it takes a lot of time and sometimes it, it, it's it's tedious this is a rather large problem you can see massive amounts here here and down here and there are no citations Just, okay well this one has a citation but there's more than three to five words strung together so it needs to have a page number and it needs to be in quotes or better yet it needs to be rephrased in your own words so once you go to the um, Blackboard and you submit that, turnitin.com will give you a report back. And you use that to determine where you might have plagiarized it or not cited correctly and to fix it. Now, as a general rule, that originality index is what they're going to give you back, okay? And what I want you to do is when you're looking at that originality index, you should not have an originality index with a percentage higher than 15 to 18%, okay? So there are some tools you can use. The school has tutorials on plagiarism, which you can, I think it's easier to see from your side. I'm having a hard time finding it from the professor side. Um, and you also have a local campus with the LRC and your LRC person should be a good reference to show you the different tutorials and you can also go to your campus dean and ask for a tutor. Every school has allotted monies for different teachers to accommodate uh, tutoring sessions. So if you're having an issue with this, it's something that I would seek out if I were you. Now, when you um, where am I at? I'm in the course home. So by the way, these videos that we're posting, if you're having trouble finding them, obviously, they're going to be right in course media here. And you just hit more and then you'll be able to see all the videos that I've posted. And then of course there's videos that the, the university posts as well. Now, when you're looking, I sent you this in an email. You should have this. If you do not, you need to please contact me and I will get it to you. What this is, is it gives you how you need to integrate your material from sources into your own writing. In other words, taking some information and paraphrasing it into your own words. It tells you what you have to document. It, um, you have to document quotations. If you use another author-specific word or words, 
you have to place them within quotation marks and you have to credit the source. And as I said in the last video, if you do that, it has to be within quotations. It has to be author, comma, year, comma, page number. So, and then you also have to document if you're just using their information or their ideas. Even if you use your own words, okay, and you're reading something and you're like, ooh, that's really good information. I want to use that. That's all well and good. You're either going to quote it and you don't want to do that too often because I can go read the source for myself. You want to try and paraphrase it and put it in your own words, but you still have to give them credit because they're the ones that um, reported it and their own ideas um, might, you have to include those because they were not your original ideas. It's, it's tantamount to intellectual theft to steal somebody else's work. Um, now, you don't need to cite, you do not need to cite anything for a material considered common knowledge, okay? And that gives definitions here, all right, when that's considered common knowledge. This is the rule of thumb I have been giving you guys. If in doubt, be cautious and cite the source, okay? I would rather see too many than not enough. So, and, and like I said, I mean, some people just get irritated because it feels like all they're doing is citing stuff. And, but that's what you have to do. The whole idea of a research paper is telling people and giving your reader what you've learned. So you want to put stuff into your own words. Now, if you keep going down on this paper, which I really love this handout, by the way, um, you have to, you need to paraphrase it and put it in your own words and it needs to be different from the original but give the same kind of information, the same information that's in there, okay? So it gives you some passages here, okay? A, two par uh, these are two paraphrases that follow the source too closely, okay? Um, hold on a second. The, par the paragraphs below provide an example by showing a passage as it appears in the source, A. That's what this is. This is directly from the source right here. Okay. Now, B and C follow too closely. Obviously, you can see everything that's underlined. All they basically did was they went through and they changed a couple, two, three, four, five, six words in a row and basically copied it. That's not, that, that's not paraphrasing. Okay. Just changing a couple words is not properly paraphrasing. C is a little better, but again, we're still stringing together three to five words, and that is considered like patchwork. You're, you're writing it down, and you're trying to paraphrase it, and this is where a lot of people have a problem. It's like, oh, well, it was only a couple, two, three. I mean, most of the paragraph is in my own words still, okay? It takes practice. And you're not going to get it right all the time. You know, and if I see a report come up and it's it looks more like this here, where there's just three or five words, I'm not necessarily going to ding really hard, but I am going to point it out to you. If I see something as in paragraph B up here, we have a problem because you haven't given me any original thought. Not much to speak of anyway. Now, when you get down to D, this is a legitimate paraphrase, okay? They, they documented the material, and but they did it in such a way that it really came out as their own writing. And I'm not going to insult your intelligence and sit here and read you every paragraph, okay? So I want you to look over this and read this and look at the difference. Compare A to B and then go back and read A again and compare it to C. Then go back and read A and compare it to D. And you'll see a distinction there of how well D is legitimately paraphrased. Now, um, and then it gives you some more general advice how to paraphrase. And the, these are the big key ideas when you're trying to paraphrase. And I will go over these because I think it's important, okay? The first one, when reading a passage, try first to understand it as a whole rather than pausing to write down specific ideas or phrases. Look, comprehension, read the paragraph. Get the gist of what you're reading that you want to paraphrase. Maybe make some, some little notes on a piece of paper, you know, but read it first, then make a little note on the stuff in the information and the resource that you think is important. Then you want to 
unless you unless we tell you or unless the assignment is to do a formal or literal paraphrase you usually don't need to paraphrase an entire passage you basically want to read it and summarize the material that helps you make a point then in your own words if you were to be telling somebody who's unfamiliar about the subject how would you tell them what the original source said and then you can use direct quotations of phrases if you want to do that like paraphrase it but you want to just paraphrase uh, but you want to direct quote like a phrase that they used or a sentence within they used you can do that um, and, and that you don't need to necessarily change or put quotations around shared language and they go over what's considered shared language up here in this box okay look you're talking to somebody who has written academic papers for 17 years it's hard it's time consuming it's frustrating and sometimes I mean quite frankly I just it, it irritated me so bad that I had to get up and I had to walk away for 20 30 minutes and come back and that's okay and then they give you methods for paraphrasing um, look away from the source and then write don't tempt yourself by looking at it or copy and pasting make yourself some notes which is point B okay and then you know change the structure of the way it's written um, change the words it takes practice all right um, and like I've said a couple times before, you can use direct quotes, and I don't mind that you do. And I don't mind if you use the big, long direct quotes over 40 words, like I showed you in the um, in the citations and then in the Purdue Owl on how you have to um, properly cite those. The problem with that is this, is I don't want you to use too many because, like I said, I want to hear what you have to. I want to read what you have to say. I want to read basically it's your interpretation more or less of the information and that's more important and the reason that's more important is because it gives me an idea of if you're understanding and comprehending what you're reading and like I said sometimes it's hard some material that you use as a source is not easy to understand so um, if you're having a problem with the resource then come to me and I'll help you or go to another professor I'm sure somebody else can help the LRC is a fabulous resource and I don't think enough people use the LRC like they should okay and then they go over you know like I did in the other um, video about how to use um, the, the the punctuation of quotation marks and how to cite it and that sort of thing so they give you that as well at the end of this here um, this is um, some more re resources on paraphrasing and and summarizing and of course they give you references from where they got their materials this is a very handy dandy little item to have now what you can also do we are going to go to my favorite website as you well know the Purdue Owl now in the Purdue Owl uh -oh, what did I do with it there it is writing exercises and if you can't find this page directly it gives you the the, the the train to get there go to the owl family of sites owl exercises paraphrasing paraphrasing and it gives you or you can just go to Google and type in owl paraphrasing exercise and you'll get a link to this page okay now they give you directions and it's just an exercise to help you and they got grammar exercises punctuation spelling sentence structure the whole nine yards it's a, this is a very 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 comprehensive site um, what you want to do is like on here all right you would take um, you know one of these you would read it get the concept of it get what they're trying to say then pull out a little sheet of paper make some notes and then practice paraphrasing and then you would go down here and you would go to answers these would be um, samples for paraphrasing that are acceptable that are good that don't have too many um, words strung together at one time that don't have um, a, an overuse of the original content now the one thing that I will say about here is is these right here the reference the citations there should I don't know why it's not in here there should be should be a comma in between um, that was that's old school that's the way I've always been taught for it to be done that there should be a, um, a comma in between the last name or the author and within 
and sorry, the author comma as right here. So I'm not exactly clear while the owl on this page over here doesn't have the comma, but you can clearly see on the citation page where they put it in there. But sorry, I digress. Okay, so these are paraphrasing exercises that you can do, and there's numerous, numerous places on the web that you can go to practice, and they give you these little um, paragraphs, sentences, um, passages where you can practice. Okay, but you do want to try to turn it in ahead of time. I really, really want you to turn it in ahead of time, okay, to where you go to the blackboard and go down to the week that it's supposed to be, which again is week nine. Scroll down, and you want to click on that and turn it in, okay? Now, let's be clear, that's not turning in your paper, okay? That's just turning it in to check for plagiarism, okay? When you go to turn it in, and most people didn't have a problem with this. I had a couple that did. You go here to turn your paper in, and then you go, again, once you get to this page, you click the red link, then you turn it in. That turns it into the assignment box so I can grade it. The um, the thing for turnitin.com is just for turnitin.com. That does not affect your grade at all. That's just for your reference and for my reference to see if you checked it. Um, as far as plagiarism is concerned, if it's if I marked your paper for it or I said you needed to look at it or I gave you a PDF copy of the plagiarism report or the Turnitin report on your last paper, I definitely want you to run it through and take a look at it. And if you're just having some serious issues and it's just it's really got you and it's it's very difficult, call me, okay? Or send me copy and paste me what you've written and give me the source and then give me what you've written and I'll help you work through it. I'll help you reparaphrase, you know, I'll help you paraphrase it in your own words. And the reason that this is so important is this. I'm going to give you a, my, my little two cents here on plagiarism. When you write something, okay, and you are using somebody else's thoughts or somebody else's ideas or somebody else's words, it is, like I said, tantamount to stealing. You are taking something that they've generally worked on for many, many years over the course of their career and using it you know, in, for, for your own ideas. And it's trying to like passing it off as your own. And that's, that's not good. For instance, let's take a look at this real quick. I will freak a couple of you out, but that is totally okay. And this is my dissertation that I wrote. So you can see, uh -huh, I had probably, no lie, I don't know, 30 drafts total, okay? Um, most of which are not in here now because it gave me a headache to go back and look at them. Um, this is my approved, I believe, and defended draft, okay? So as you can see, if you'll look down here, that's 91 pages of work. I had a very low originality index. I, I very low originality index when I did this paper. It was like 3%, okay? And it took forever to do this because I had to constantly go back and I had to constantly redo. And I mean, I struggled with it just like every, and if a professor acts like they've never struggled with it, they're lying. It's hard and it takes a lot of time, okay? But it can be done. All right, and I'm trying to find like this entire section on McCubin and Patterson's double X ABC mo ABC X model. That it, it it was time consuming. It was stressful, but it can be done. Okay, so you have to make sure that you cite in text. You can see all these in text citations, and you have to make sure that you don't take somebody else's work as your own because I'm telling you as hard as I worked on 91 pages of information it's 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 offensive when somebody steals your work and so, and I know that it's not a most people you know just do it and think that they're doing it right and it's not intentional I don't think that it's intentional 99% of the time but it is something that you need to work on so again when you're looking at these 
reports from the, see, this isn't that bad, okay? We could, we could work on this, or he could, the person that wrote this could have direct quoted this. Now, see this right here, this number six up here? That's, that's a, a resource. That's not a plagiarized piece. This has got too many strung together, needs to be reworded a little, okay? Now, on this one, this is a little more heavy. I mean, this is basically like, okay, do you see number 8 and number 12 here? This middle paragraph, okay? This looks an awful lot like this. Like the B example here, where it was just a changing, you know, a couple words here and then using their words and then changing a couple words and then using their words. That paragraph here is very similar to this. And I think you can see that. I'm more than happy to help you. So, like I said, as a general rule, this is a very, very good resource. And like I said, they have places where you can practice the paraphrasing. So again, plagiarism is hard. It's, it, it's hard to avoid, but you need to make sure that you make a concerted effort. And no, I don't expect it to be perfect. I do expect to see an improvement from the first paper to this paper in week nine. Okay, And a lot of you had very low, very low originality indexes. Some of you are just natural writers. I was not a natural writer when I started. It has taken years to get good at it. But if you plan on going beyond your bachelor's degree to get a master's or even a PhD, this is something that the sooner you start to really practice it and master it, the better off you're going to be. So I just want you guys to stay focused, stay on target, and if you need me, as always, please let me know and give me a call. I'll talk to you later, and again, my number is 256 506 3354. I usually don't answer the phone on Sundays, but if you need me anytime other than that, give me a call and I'll help you out as best I can. I'll see you guys later on. Talk to you later. Bye.